Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, lovers of sports all across Nigeria and the world, it is time for Game On, coming to you live from the studios of New Central Television. My name is Baba Tunde Kweki. Again, we'd like to thank you for joining us, making a date with us every night, 9 to 10 p.m., Mondays to Fridays, as we together traverse the world of sports all across Nigeria, the continent, and the world. Don't forget that we're streaming live on YouTube, and you can also join in the show using our social media handles. And I keep promising you, but I promise I'll finally make a date this week where we'll bring back the live TV uh, telephone lines where you can join in and let us know what you're thinking regarding sports, be it uh, domestically and internationally. We're also using our social media handles, X, Instagram, Facebook as well, so you can use that to join in on the show and let us know what you're thinking uh, as uh, regards sports. I'm not doing the show to alone tonight. There's Oyechi or Baro joining me, and together we'll be looking at all this together. Oye, thank you so much for okay. joining us. Uh, I have to ask this. It was a wonderful weekend for sports. What was your highlight sporting moment? We had African games, I would say. Mm. Um, Nigeria's um, dominance, athletics, the fact that we still kept that top sport, I think it's a win for us. Like, what, you're talking uh, dominance in terms of overall or in athletics? Yeah, overall, athletics at the African Games. Nigeria still maintained their number one position, mm. gaining um, 11 gold medals. So in athletics I think alone. In athletics alone. Mm. So I think for us, dominating that and still keeping that stronghold at the African Games, that was the big one for me for the weekend. Okay. I think that's a really great place to start the show from because we're looking at the African Games that uh, just concluded in Accra, Ghana, over the weekend, everything has come and gone. Africa has now dispersed. Everyone is looking forward to the Paris 2024 Olympic Games that will be taking on late. That will be coming up later this year. Uh, before that, we will be having another competition in Nigeria here, where five African countries will be competing in what is known as the Continental Relays in Ibadan. We'll be telling you about that uh, as the week progresses, but it promises to be really good, and we'll be going down at the Lekon Salami Stadium in Adamasic by Ibadan. Look forward to that. But let's uh, quickly start with the, how the Africa Games ended for Nigeria. Let's quickly show you the medals table, how it all ended for all the teams that uh, participated there. Unsurprisingly, Egypt emerged as a top country again, uh, winning the competition with a massive medal haul. Uh, that's it. 102 gold medals. I think that's the first time in the history of the Africa Games that any country has ever breached the 100 gold medal mark and it was Egypt that did it, winning 100, a total of 191 uh, medals, but uh, 47 silver medals, 42 bronze medals, adding to that list, uh, gave Egypt the uh, overall lead at the end of proceedings. Nigeria in second place with a creditable 47 gold medals, 34 silver, 40 bronze medals for 121, followed by South Africa and Algeria. Interesting, those two uh, countries, will tell you about that, why that happened, or what's so significant about that. But Tunisia, Ghana also finishing in the top six uh, with 19 gold medals, 22 silver, sorry, 29 silver and 20 bronze medals ahead of the likes of Morocco, Ethiopia, and Kenya. I'm sure the Ghanaians must be absolutely delighted with that Oinye mm -hmm. because looking at what they did at 2019 compared to what they did now, there has been remarkable, remarkable improvement. Yes, remarkable improvement indeed. Um, Ghana did not make it to the top 10 in 2019. Oh, they wow. Were, at yes, all? at all. They didn't make it to the top 10. Uh, they were 15th overall in the African Games for 2019. But this year, the fact that they are hosting, yes, um, slow starts for them at uh, the beginning of the competition, but arm wrestling came and Ghana were able to snoop almost all the gold medals wait, 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 in let's, 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 let's stick with 2019. Okay. How did they do in 2019? Okay, um, by the records of... here, I can see that they got two gold medals, two silver, and nine bronze medals, okay. finishing with 13 medals, medals overall. So yes. how many did they get in 2024 or 2023? 2023, that's um, for the African Games here, 19 gold, 29 oh, wow. silver, and 21 bronze. So there's, there's actually a remarkable improvement. Yes, away from... From the last edition. So, so I, 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 I really want to ask, do you think hosting, obviously, gave them the greater impetus to go ahead and uh, win as many medals that they did? Yes, I think um, that um, also was a factor mm. to them stepping up the game away from what they did in 2019. I remember the whole backlash, you know, when they started the games, they were not winning any medals until arm wrestling came and boxing. Ghana did step up their winning spree there. They got more medals in the arm wrestling. And again, from the backlash, the criticism coming from um, sport journalists, fans in the stadium and all, 
I think that should have made the athletes step up a bit to mm. put smiles on the faces of um, Ghanaians now that they are hosting the competition. Now, I, I also do remember that the um, boxing event, yeah. I did see uh, Samuel Takchi. He was the one who got some gold in the Commonwealth Games. Yes, very true. Game. Yeah. Now, keeping that gold medal, making sure that it remains in the, in, in the home front, Ghana, where they are hosting the competition. So I would say with all the backlash, with everything, Ghana still made it to the top 10. Okay, so with the gold medals that they did win, mm -hmm. where did most of them come from? I'm wrestling. I'm wrestling. I'm wrestling. How yes. many? They did win up to 16, I did hear. No, I, I don't think so. Okay, yeah, I'm wrestling. I'm wrestling. They got eight gold. Eight gold yes, medals. Yes, but 16 medals in total. Oh, okay, so if we remove eight gold medals mm -hmm. from the 14 that they got, they probably have ended with six medals. And don't forget, I'm wrestling actually yes. is making its debut yes, at, at the African Games. So just in time to save Ghana's um, blushes, as it were. But where else did they get their gold, their uh, gold medals I can see... The football event, oh, yes. Men the and male and events. the women um, football event, mm. I think they dominated. Mm. Um, the Ghana princesses met up with um, the Falconets. In they the final, defeated the final of that women's football. And, and the, the, men, the men also got gold medal mm. in the final. In Uganda. Yes, of course. Boxing also, they got four gold. Okay. So that should count for them. Mm. Athletics, only three. Mm. And that was the historic one for Joseph Amor, yes, who got yes. gold, fetched gold for them in the 200 meters yeah. event since mm. 19... 73. And also so, the one in the women's high jump, I believe. Yes, high jump. Mm. Also dominated in high jump with that gold medal. And um, I don't think Benjamin Azamati finished with any no, he medal didn't. at no, all. He, he finished fifth mm. in the men's 100, 100 meters, meters, so yeah. short of uh, medal, dear. So three gold medals for them in athletics. Mm. So when you're looking at everything that Ghana has put in place for this um, African Games, mm. Uh, the tremendous amount of money that they spent. You know, we've talked about it quite extensively here uh, on New Central Sports shows, both uh, in the game in the afternoon and, of course, game on the night. Uh, the, the tremendous expenditure that they, they put up. Also, we spoke to a Ghanaian economist who also felt that it was a complete waste of money, that the money could have been better spe uh, spent, spent doing other things, like uh, even building roads from, uh, from the rural areas into the urban centers so that they could bring food mm. to uh, the Ghanaian people and uh, reduce the, pr the pressures on prices and inflation. Mm. Is, this, is, this a, is this a proper trade-off that, okay, we spent all this money, I won 14 gold medals, and we hosted Africa and everybody was happy. Is that it? No, I don't think it's a proper trade-off for um, the money invested into this competition. Mm. I know that they said the university stadium will be converted for students. That's the Bottoman Sports yes, Complex. Bottom, yes, will be, will be uh, converted later. Sports University. Yes. And, and the gentleman we did speak to, the economist, the Joe Jackson, did say there's, there's already a university of sports. Why do we need another one? I'm wondering where, how they want to get dividend from that investment that they have made. Um, even looking at all the facilities, they had to step up. These um, um, stadia from... Um, that which they played football, fans were still even complaining. They were complaining that it had a bad pitch. So that's uh, the Cape Coast uh, yes, Stadium. Yes, it had yeah. a bad pitch. So I think if and don't forget as well to, the, the hockey pitch as well. Yeah, South Africa South pulled Africa out. Claimed that it was not up to scratch, so yes. they pulled out their team. Yes, and uh, Ghana's women's team eventually won hockey. Uh, the hockey, women's hockey. So if the South Africans were there, I don't think I don't um, they think, would have um, gotten so. medals. Mm. So I think. It, it, the, the, the investment and the showings at the game did not pay off. It's not par at all. Maybe after the games, we can see. Remember, our guest is supposed to join today, but he says load shedding. So <laughs> Ghana has returned back to <laughs> the oh, Ghana wow. they knew before now. Just in case you didn't hear that, what <laughs> you said, we had a guest who was supposed to join us uh, live from Accra, Ghana, but he couldn't join because um, their own version of the is it IKEDC or PHCN, uh, they. they, they we basically cut the power, so yeah. you couldn't join us. So don't let any Ghanaian ever troll you anymore <laughs> about how Nigeria does we not have electricity. That debate to rest. They don't have electricity <laughs> either. So, but it, it's it's good to see. Um, at, at least for for the most part, I mm. think a lot of people were uh, pretty happy with uh, Ghana's hosting. I know Onye uh, Uchiwachuku will be joining us uh, later. Uh, this week to talk about his experiences at the Africa Games. Mm. Uh, he was supposed to join us, but his flight was delayed. But uh, look, leaving Ghana aside, um, mm -hmm. you you talked about. You don't think that it was commensurate yes. with the kind of investments that they put into uh, building Hosting, facilities, yeah. training athletes, and preparing them for these games. There were talks about how some teams, the, the rackets are supposed to use, arrived a day before. Some teams are training at uh, the, the cyclists, team. they bought their bicycles Second themselves. Hand bicycles, and they were not even up to, up yeah. to par. Aluminum yeah. bikes as against carbon fiber. Yeah. But what, in your own opinion, would have been a proper return for Ghana? Considering the fact that they spent almost uh, $250 million 
to, 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 to bring this competition to life. Before going to answer that question, mm. the sport minister had come out to take responsibility for every falls okay. that um, the athletes experienced. So has he resigned? He has not. Okay. So he has not. He hasn't taken responsibility then. He just came to apologize and say, let it be on me. Let me take the fall. But I, I really, the investment, when I saw the total amount that Ghana put into this, um, hosting this competition, I felt, okay, for facility, for facility, where are the amounts dedicated for the athletes? Hmm. No. What will happen to these athletes? They just you came see, out soon. None. Surely there must have been something. In there terms was of nothing. Preparations, you know, incentives, something. Really? The boxing team says that they were preparing on their own. They bought their own gloves. Hmm. The facility where they even prepared is nothing to write home about. Wow. Now, if Ghana had invested in their own athletes, this is not the result we will get for the African Games, for hosting the African Games. You're even finishing in top 10 in sixth position with 19 gold, 29 mm. silver, and 21. If they've invested, just like Egypt, you know what Egypt is doing? Mm. Egypt is, they're, they're, they're making sport one of their economic strategy to get money for the country. They're investing in sport. They want to join up with the Arab nations who are looking at sport now, holding sport so dear. Qatar doesn't joke with sport anymore. True. Bahrain, they, are now, they now understand that sport Saudi Arabia, and Saudi Arabia mm. they've become a hub of sports right now. Qatar understand that sport can bring in money. Yeah. Sport can, can, can change the, the tides, you know, the economic situation in the country. That's what Egypt is doing now. The budget Egypt has for table tennis alone. Mm. Yeah, we talked about that mm. extensively, but it's probably the, kind, the same amount of they money. They go for that, training camps. That, that some national football association spend. Spend. Is what, is what uh, Egypt spends on table, table tennis, tennis alone. alone. So let, let's, let's leave Ghana aside okay. and let's look at you know, Egypt uh, as it were. We'll mm. come to Nigeria, but okay. Egypt, of course, have won these um, African games back to back, back, back. now. Um, how, would you, how would you compare how they fared? in 2019 okay. against 2024. Okay, by my records here, in 2019, uh, Egypt garnered 94 gold medals. Okay. 94 and silver. And this time around, they won 102. Yes. So that you can see there's a remarkable improvement. Improvement, of, improvement yeah. indeed. But the total medals they got in 2019 was 260. In 2023 here, which just um, ended, 191. Mm. I, th I think that's a drop. From the total medals. Oh, gold, hold on, hold on. Gold, gold counts. Gold, gold counts. counts. Gold definitely counts for more than silver and bronze. Yeah. So if they want more gold medals, surely that yes. is some success. That, that's that's success. That's mm. success indeed. But let's let me take it away from the total medals amassed mm. at the competition. But the their dominance still remain. Mm. But you know that in athletics, one problem we see is that Egypt are not are nowhere to be found in athletics. Well, maybe or not, maybe not on the games. track. But, but you know that Egypt, on they field, do not in also events like uh, javelin. Yes, you can see uh, the, the Egyptians foot, there. Yes, the hockey, you can see the Egyptians there. Swimming, um, swimming, you can see South Africans dominate in swimming mm. more. But these, you know, accomplishments from the medals, um, you know, garnered at the African Games, we don't see them at the Olympics. Rare for you to see Egypt, maybe the wrestling event at the hold Olympics. Hold on, Mark. I, I, hold on, sorry. <laughs> yeah, say, wait, hold, what do you mean? So you're basically saying that Egypt are local champions as far as Africa is, uh, is concerned? Not Africa, I think the world. Mm. Because I, I did say at the Olympics, we don't see Egypt go this way with um, garnering me uh, medals at a competition. Okay. Tokyo Olympics, Egypt's Ghana just two gold medals. Mm. You understand? So you, you, wait, wait. Mean? Nigeria won one. Toby, I was like, gave us. Okay, just wanted to know. But let, let's talk about Nigeria now. Okay, how did we do compared to 2019 to 2024? Okay. Has there been an improvement? Have there been a drop? Yes, we're second in 2019. Now we're still second again in 2024. Yeah. But has there been an improvement? Did we win more weight medals or less medals? Tell us. I think we won, um, le I'll call it less medals. Mm. Because if I compare 2019, we just have one gold ahead of what we got, in, one gold this year, ahead of what we got in 2019. So you're saying in 2019 we had... More, more, more silver, okay. more bronze than what we had this year. So everything we did, we just improved by just one gold medal, yes, while Egypt improved gold. by as many as eight. Yes. So would you, in, in terms of the preparation, um, the kind of finances and logistics we put into these African games, Winning one gold medal more than we did in 2019. I don't, it's, not I don't, a, it's not an improvement for that's me. That's not an improvement. Yes. Okay. Just wanted to be sure. It's not an improvement. We, just, we should have done better. Okay. Just, just wanted to be sure. But um, still talking about um, the African Games now, we do have uh, something to celebrate. Don't forget that the Nigerian 
wrestling team at the Afri African Games did tremendously well, especially the women's wrestling team who won as many as uh, six, six gold medals, I yes. believe. Yeah, six gold medals. Yes. Uh, but we can tell you uh, that another Nigerian has qualified for the wrestling event for the uh, um, 20 Paris 2024 Olympic Games. Four Nigerian women had already qualified. One, of, one Nigerian uh, male athlete has joined them now, and Ashton Mutua has booked his spot to the 2024 Paris Olympic Games after winning uh, his events and qualifying at the uh, Olympic qualifying tournament that was held in Alexandria over the weekend. Remarkable, remarkable story, this young, young man. Uh, when you, you want to tell us a bit more about us, uh, about him, for those who don't know who Ashley Mutua is. Yes, Ashley Mutua uh, is an American who pledges um, allegiance to Nigeria just before the start of oh, the African Games. Is, is he purely American or is he... Nigerian American, or is he American with Nigerian heritage? Yes, with Nigerian her heritage. Okay. He, he, uh, I think I that's it. State his, state yes, his father hails from Plateau State. Okay. So I know he's got an American mother. Okay. And the, um, he pledges allegiance to, you know, fight for Nigeria. We've, it's been a long time coming. Mm. I would see uh, male dominance in wrestling has always been the ladies. Yes, the ladies have I mean, always, always been Nigeria proud. Uh, I remember, Genesis, yes, uh, Adrian Okure and her sister as well. Bro, do, do, yeah, bless bless bro, do, do, yeah. So no, no surprises, but it's really heartwarming to finally see yes. a Nigerian male wrestler come through and finally get to the, to the Olympic Games. But you, you were talking about uh, Ashton Mutua as well. You yes, know, um, he, he dominated. I think he, um, he had his fighting career from collegiate level. Mm. Um, the juniors, he dominated. The seniors, he also dominated. And now he's um, going, I'll call it pro. Yes, mm. I think he's going pro because I, I saw some of his um, records by pinfall. He's always winning by pinfall. Mm. So it's a great one. Um, he won silver medal in Ghana okay. after defeating his opponent. And this is, he made his debut in Ghana, got a for silver Ni medal for Nigeria, yeah. for Nigeria. And he will be making his debut at the Paris 2024 Olympics. Mm. Great one for him. Having to, but this is, a, this is a federation that is working. Maybe that's why it's easier for him to dominate mm. you know, his own um, um, KG at the African his own, Games, his own category, category yeah, at the African, African Games, Games yeah. and also at this championship in Egypt. Is this something that we should, that Daniel Gali should be looking at, you know? Because yes. we do have a tremendous amount of Nigerians. Do you mean looking at investing in the male categories? No, no, what I'm, no, what I'm saying is that... His investment is showing in the ladies. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I'm just saying that, I mean, looking at the men, they're not as... Um, uh, do I say they're, they're not on Dominant, the same level, yeah. you know, as, as the women's uh, wrestling? Maybe the, because of the quality of the opposition that they are, they are coming up against mm. is much higher. Is it a thing that we should be looking at probably getting these people like Ashim Mutua, American, Nigerian Americans born in the States who, are, who have a great wrestling it's career, experience. willing to pledge their nationality to Nigeria in order to improve the Nigerian wrestling, uh, uh, especially men's category. wrestling category uh, in the nearest future? Because there, there's a lot of talent there. You talk about Ashim Mutua, a lot of people actually don't know that former UFC... Um, um, welterweight champion, Kamal Usman was a was also, prodigious yeah. wrestler as well. I saw that he could in have wrestled for too. Nigeria too. So is that something that maybe Daniel Ligali should be looking at? I think it's the way to go. Because Mutua has now proven that we can, we can get those who have um, uh, Nigerian descent, mm. get to lure them so they can represent the country. But they what happens to the That's ones here in Nigeria? The ones here in Nigeria, you, you hey, can't compare. Be careful what you say. You don't, don't let them go for it. You can't compare the training facility that is made available for the ones here in Nigeria mm. with that abroad. The quality of coaching. The quality as well. of coaching. We have only one Nutrition. coach. We have we have only one coach for the ladies and the guys mm. for Nigerian wrestling today. Purity is mm. not purity. purity. Yeah. He has been the only one. But these are guys who have had experience from collegiate level. So when they come here, they can also share their experience too. I'm very sure Mutua is a very good inclusion into the Nigerian wrestling team. Oh, absolutely. I he will share his wealth of experience mm. to the team. And I, I will say it again. The Wrestling Federation is one federation that is working. Mm. It is working. Now we'll go poach these athletes, they come represent Nigeria and maybe give us the laurels. Well, we'll definitely be speaking with the president of the Nigerian Wrestling Federation, Daniel Legal, in due course, uh, uh, regarding uh, the men's wrestling, um, uh, do I say, um, John, do, I, uh, do I say department of, of uh, Nigerian Wrestling <laughs> Federation. Uh, there really seems to be a lack of quality in, in that uh, 
category, we need to find out exactly what the problem is. Mm -hmm. If you can get only one Nigerian wrestler who was actually born, raised, and trained abroad to come here and actually pick up an Olympic ticket, that means there's something going on there. Uh, we need to get to the bottom of it. We'll be speaking with Daniel Egali in due course. But let's quickly show you the list of Nigerian wrestlers that have now qualified for the Olympic Games for Nigeria. We did mention that Ashton Mutua is in that list. Uh, here he is at the bottom. He's the only man on this list. Yeah. The, the rest, as you can see, are some of the finest wrestlers on the African continent, all of them African champions. Anna Ruben, Blessing Oboro Dudu, multiple Olympiad, Christiana Gusoya, Esther Kolawale, Odwanyo Adekuroye, all of them will be competing for Nigeria. Six of them. Christiana made her debut and she dominated with gold. I was really surprised. Uh, really, really, really surprised. surprised. Her first outing yes. for Nigeria yes. and she won the medal at the, uh, at the just African uh, Games. Con concluded African Games. Really, really heartwarming. Uh, so, yeah, th that's how we wrap up our do I say, review of the African Games. We'll still be talking about it a little bit more uh, during the week when Onye uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wachuku comes back uh, to Nigeria. He'll be telling us, you know, his own experiences uh, in Accra. You're still watching Game On. We'll take a short break on return. We'll be talking about football drama, never far away from the Nigeria Professional Football League. We'll be talking about all that and much more after the break. Thank you so much for staying tuned. You're still watching Game On here on News Central Television. Onye and I have been looking at the just concluded 13 Africa Games in Accra. And uh, she's giving quite the assessments, looking at how Nigeria performed and also how winners, eventual winners, Egypt also performed as well. And also gave, uh, gave us a really interesting uh, performance that uh, Ghana also had, moving from just two gold medals in 2019 to 14 this time around. What has it been value for money, considering the fact that they spent uh, around $250 million to put this competition together? Was it money well spent? And was it a return on investment? We'll be talking about that uh, as the week continues. But Let's leave that behind and move on to everything that has happened in the Nigeria Professional Football League uh, over the weekend and today. Matches were played in the MPFL over the weekend. Let's quickly give you the results. There was also another match that was played today as well, but there it is on your screen. Enugu Rangers can do no wrong. It is nine games unbeaten. They went away to Heartland and defeated them by two goals to one. That was a re brilliant result for them and you will see, you'll see how this has affected the league. Uh, Katina United also defeated defeated Abia Warriors 2-1. Controversial game. We'll be talking about that in depth with uh, our guest pretty soon. Eimba lost away in Elori to Kuala United by two goals to one. Lobby Stars were held at home to a hard fighting by Elsa United. Aqua United, something is going on. They went away. A team that could hardly buy a win this season. They went away from home, uh, defeated Plateau United in just in front of a capacity crowd. Thankfully, it, uh, the uh, Plateau United fans uh, took it in good faith. Remo Stars also defeated Bendel Insurance in a really good game played in Shagam over the weekend. That match between Sunshine Stars and Rivers United was postponed. Uh, and they also, so there was also another game result. Doma United and Gombe United played out a one-all draw in uh, the uh, Gombe derby. Kano Pillars defeated Sporting Lagos 1-0, while Niger Tornadoes defeated Shooting Stars by two goals to one in a match that was played today. Let's quickly show you how that has affected the Nigeria Premier League table. Let's show you the top six and tell you that, uh, believe it or not, it has changed. Rangers are on top. I can hear the likes of Emeka Wani and uh, Calvin Emeka in far away London rejoicing right now, but it's too early to rejoice yet. 11 matches to go. Uh, let's, uh, now, now, just hold on. Let's hold on. Just show you that. Yes, Rangers on top, 48 points. Lobby Stars with 47. Uh, they dropped by uh, after they couldn't win at home. Remo Stars moving to the top three, while Aimba are behind them at 45 points. Just three points separate fourth from top, while Plato United and Kano Pillars uh, are in fifth and sixth place. Let's look at the bottom of the league and see how that has been impacted as well. Heartland, oh wow, they're back at the bottom of the league now. 23 points just above them is Gombe United with 24, Niger Tornadoes with 30, uh, Bielsa United with 31, and of course uh, Aqua United and Rivers United are just outside the relegation zone. Don't forget Rivers United have four games in hand I'm because, yeah, you know, of course they, they uh, have, no, so much for but them. it's because of their, their, their continental, their continental yes. campaign in the yeah. CAF Confederations Cup, yeah. So, yeah, well, uh, big game, like we talked about, happened this weekend in uh, Katina, the Mohamed Odiko Stadium, uh, involving Katina United and Abia Warriors. Drama, incredible drama. Let's quickly show you what happened. Uh, that game was 2-1 uh, was in favor of Katina United. It seemed to be ending in favor of Katina United, but this seemed to be what would have been the equalizer for uh, Abia Warriors. It seemed like a legitimately good goal. 
Yeah? And everybody was particularly pleased about that. Referee had signaled the goal, and he was heading towards the center circle to, move to, uh, to, to yeah, signal that it was a goal. But for some reason, he spoke to his, uh, to the, I think, I think the, the, match the match commissioner, and for some reason, the, the goal was reversed, and the match ended 2-1. Now, I cannot for the life of me understand what happened there, but a lot has been happening in the Nigeria Professional Football League over the last few weeks in terms of refereeing. Of course, we saw that VAR, uh, in quote, incident in, uh, in Aba between Ayimba uh, and the visiting Doma United as well. Uh, the referee in that game was punished. Now, this game, too, has also attracted the ire of the NFF officials. And this look, let, let, let's see it again. It, it looks like a legitimate goal. Player seemed offside. Ref, assistant referee did not flag for an offside at any point in time, it looked like a perfectly good equalizer. But how and why the referee chalked that off? There we go. Look at the pass. Player was definitely at onside. Extra time. We still onside. had time in extra time. And, and this goal went in. This ball went into oh, the oh, net. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 just, I have to ask you first. You're here beside me. What do you think? Because I, I cannot find a proper explanation for this. I also don't have an explanation for this. And I don't know why a referee should go seek constant or seek, seek um, um, if to, um, from the match commissioner like if second, it should, opinion, yeah. second opinion if it should be given a goal or not. I'm wondering what's really happening here. Now, this referee, I remember the NFF um, sanctioned 14 referees, mm. and we are seeing this. This should have made them sit up mm. in the Nigerian Premier Football League. But here, what we are seeing is a referee going to the match official uh, commissioner to seek for his, his second opinion. opinion. Yeah, when he has assistant he has referees, he has, fourth... he has the fourth referee. He has um, the assistant referees who are on the pitch of play. Mm. Well, Why not seek their, their opinion? Thankfully, he didn't go and check the OB van for a uh, video <laughs> replay. Like, uh, well, well, joining us now here in Lagos is uh, a former re re referee himself. He's also an uh, MPFL referee assessor, Mr. Dele Atom. Thank you so much for joining us uh, uh, on the show. It's been you, you must agree, it's been a very interesting few, few weeks uh, in the NPFL regarding refereeing. But these decisions, these decisions really call into question the quality of the referees that the NPFL is putting out. Do you agree? Yeah, say that again. Well, I, I said, looking at the decisions that we've seen in the NPFL over the last few weeks, for example, this one that we've seen today, the, uh, uh, the one that happened in Aba between uh, Eimba Doma. and Doma United, and a few other ones that I've had, I think, in, River, in Port Harcourt again, uh, between Rivers United and Kano Pillars, some of these, question, these um, decisions have been questionable and has brought into question the quality of the refereeing and referees that we do have in the NPFL. Um, um, okay, uh, good evening, the guys in the studio and the uh, viewers at home. Yes, I want to agree with you that uh, the case study on the screen that you are watching is a very bad decision uh, by the referee. Uh, sincerely, from the angle by which the, that we can see the game, you know, our game is only always one, uh, one, one camera, yes. View. <laughs> From, from, the, from the one camera angle that we can see, there was nothing wrong with that goal. And the referee on the pitch and his assistant agree as much because the assistant made a movement that showed that uh, he agreed with the goal. And the referee also agreed with the goal. Uh, for whatsoever reason, that referee was called upon by his assessor and the match commissioner. And that is very strange. That is very strange. No, no, I, um, I have to ask you, Mr. Atom, is it, is it, is it, is it um, standard practice for a referee to approach the match con commissioner regards, regarding a decision, an on-field decision? Is it standard practice? I, I tell you, it's, it's not a standard practice anywhere in the world. Even, even where we have a, um, a communication gadget, even where we have a five-way or six-way communication gadget, whereby the man in the middle and his assistant we have communication gadgets on. If by chance the the match commissioner and the assessor are having mass com uh, communication gadgets, their communication gadget will not be able to communicate with the referee. They can only hear what the referee are saying, but they will why the referees will be able to communicate among themselves, the match commissioner 
and the assessor will not be able to communicate with the referee. But they, can, they will have privilege of listening to what the, the referees are saying. So it is not uh, a, a standard practice anywhere. And it's also strange to Nigeria. Mm. So you, you have also said that perhaps that shows the quality of referee we have in Nigeria. In as much as I agree that this is bad, I will say that, that does not represent the quality of referee we have in Nigeria. Don't forget, mm. for that weekend in MPFL, we have ten other, nine other centers. We have, we have nine referees, two assistant referees, and four, one fourth official. We also have uh, about 40 something centers where NNL were played. We also have several other matches, uh, women, women league matches, and all that, that are played. And this has never happened before. So the incident has happened in Kano this weekend. Um, in Kats in and Kats one has happened that the red area, mm. we have saw uh, someone has to go and do VAR in OB van. Those, those, those are pockets of action, uh, actions by some individuals that does not represent what Nigeria referee stands for. Okay, we are very happy that um, that uh, match was played where we didn't see irate fans. They would have taken it all out on the referee. But this is one out of many that we've seen. Referees bringing the game to disrepute at the Nigerian Premier Football League. And now we hear that the NFF department has um, withdrawn this referee from any matches, officiating any Abdul matches. Malik, Abdul Malik, yes, Abdul Malik. Yes, Abdul Malik, Abdul Malik from officiating any match in the MPFL. Is Northern this Northern enough? Um, delay is this enough deterrent to other referees uh, who would go about doing this till the end of the season? Talking about the withdrawal. I, I, I think uh, that, is the, that is the highest uh, punishment that can be done. Uh, uh, if at least delete, withdrawing from the game, probably deleting from the referee, MPFL panel, probably getting demoted. That is all that can be done. And I think it's also huge enough to serve as a deterrent because uh, it takes a lot for referee to get to the top. In Nigeria, it takes a lot. It takes like uh, maybe minimum of 10 years for you to get to, to MPFL. I know referees that, that were delisted from the MPFL panel last year, and they, they've not been recalled, and they may, ne they may never be, be recalled. So. Uh, it's, for me, it's, it's a punishment that is huge enough to serve as deterrent. But this also calls to question why we cannot also deploy technology in our... Yeah, I, I, I don't want to justify what the referees have done. I, I've said it earlier that it's not, a global, it's not a standard practice globally. It's not also a Nigeria practice. I'm sure we have not seen this in the league before. But again, it's also called to question that... Uh, it is high time that the Federation begin to talk, to think about technology, especially minimally communication gadgets. Because I want to, I want, I know you will agree with me that if communication gadgets has been deployed for this game, there won't be any reason for the referee to leave wherever he is to go and meet the match commissioner and assessor at the touch line. So for me, uh, communication gadgets should be the minimal, minimal um, equipment that we should be deployed to our league, and the time is now. Okay. Now, okay. if you cannot have good online technology yet, if you cannot have VAR yet, communication gadgets is what I think we can have. In Lagos, we have about three communication gadgets mm. among our referees and society that are being used for games. If anybody sees could do game over the weekend in Lagos, we have communication gadgets deployed for, for that game. That is an effort that Lagos State Referee Council uh, are making. So I also believe that uh, the Federation and the League in particular should also make this available okay. so that we will not continue okay. to see this in mm -hmm. our league. Okay, okay. Well, uh, we also have China Acheru joining us from Portaco. China, of course, is uh, one of the finest football journalists in Nigeria, author of the seminal book, A Thousand Times on the Same Road. China, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I, I just want to get your impression of what you're seeing on the screen. and. You know, we, we, we talked about this in the past, what happened in that game between Rivers United and, of course, uh, uh, Kano Pillars. We've talked about that incredible VAR moment in Aba between Aimba and Doba United. Now we're seeing this as well. 
refereeing, you, you get the impression that maybe we should be doing a lot more in terms of punishment for referees because Dele Atom has just said that this is the highest punishment that any referee can get, being delisted from match day games. Do you agree? Yes, I agree, right? Um, but if you can find him guilty of anything criminal, then maybe you can prosecute him. But I think the only thing we can say now is probably incompetence, uh, bringing the game to disrepute. What do you do as a referee, as a referee's body? You delist him, highest punishment. Unless you can prove something else, then you can take the matter higher up. I saw that game yesterday. I saw clips actually of the goal that was scored and disallowed, and I was shocked. I mean, I've, I've tried to explain it in many, many different ways, but I can't tell what the referee was thinking about. One, we are all sure it was, was not offside. It wasn't offside. So was there a foul in the build up to the play? Did we see anything? Only the referee knows. And of course, the most comical of it all was going to the touchline to talk with the referee assessor and match commissioner. I just don't understand what he was doing there. So yes, delisting him is something good. Can there be something more than that? Uh, I don't think so for now. Mm. Okay, um, I would like to um, ask Dele this right now. Situations like this is what um, um, Confederation of African Football see and do not list Nigerian referees for the African Cup of Nations or continental competitions. Do referees in Nigeria get trained, retrained in any way, Dele? Well, the, the issue of uh, Nigerian referees being at competitions have been discussed, especially when those meet. Were out. By the way, there is a Nigerian referee that just concluded uh, all African games, but that is by the way. Oh, now, come on, I, really, I mean, we, saw, we, yeah, didn't see, has... we didn't see an Africa Cup of Nations where mm. there was not a single Nigerian referee. Yes, this particular African Cup of Nations, there was no single Nigerian referee. But we've had Nigerian referee as Cup of Nations in the past. Yes. We have had a Dubia Salaita referee. We have had the Miri, we have had CC, we have had the Olani or no that. This particular one, there is no Nigerian referee. And um, the reason is not far fetched because at the point in time, we had uh, Ferdinand Udo that was in LEA. He was doing very well in, in LEA um, at that time. And unfortunately, injury caught up with him. Unfortunately, at, at the time that injury, that injury happened, we did not have. Uh, People that can immediately replace him because no, he was very young. Nobody was pre was thinking that he was going to get injured as at the time he gets injured. So I think that is particularly the reason we were not able to produce uh, re re referees for the for for the Afcon this year and the the year before this. But I think uh, um, at the next Afcon there there are a lot of young referees that are coming up, and I think that. Uh, uh, we are going to have re uh, referees at that level. But I don't want anybody to think that uh, it is because of what is happening in the league uh, that we don't have referees at that competition. There are a lot of things. We have also seen that uh, even there are referees from countries that we doubt, whether they play league or not, that have officiated at that point. We know, we know all these things. So what is happening in our league that that we don't like, we continue to talk about them, that we don't like them, we want Nigeria, Nigeria referees to improve, we don't want all those embarrassing decisions, but that does not mean that it is because of that we don't have referees in the international competition because okay. for, uh, for the period that Nigeria referees have been called to officiate at international competition, mm. they've never, never been disappointed. Just this weekend, Ogaboy led some, some, some team of referees to South Africa for, for South Africa for games. We did not hear of anything about them. Um, indeed, they have gone out for competition. Yeah, Mr. Agdo has gone out. A good number of referees have gone out. Yes, they were not at the last AFCON, but we hope that uh, at the next AFCON they will be there. Okay. Okay, Mr. Dilato, thank you so much for your time. We have to let you go, unfortunately. But we'll, be keep, we'll be definitely be talking to you more uh, as uh, the season continues. You are definitely our referee expert. So we'll be keeping a close eye on refereeing in the Nigeria Professional Football League as we have 11 matches to go uh, to the end of the season. Thank you so much for your time, uh, Mr. Dilato. 
Thank you for having me. Yeah. Well, Shana Achiro, you are still with us. Uh, you have watched over a thousand Nigeria professional football games uh, and continental games and games everywhere. What is the worst refereeing performance that you can recall ever seeing, either in Nigeria or abroad? Well, um, without having to check records, I would think it's the CAF Confederation Cup <laughs> match between um, Dolphins and uh, uh, Ismaili mm. in Calabar. Yeah, Dolphins won that game. I think two goals to nothing. But I've not seen anything like that. It was, it was, it was mayhem. The referee was issuing cards like it was Christmas gifts he was giving. And um, even after the game, two Ismaili players, one got a yellow card after the game, and another got a red card after the game. It was, it was mayhem on part of the referee here. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Well, uh, China, let's uh, move on and leave Nigeria Professional Football League behind because if we stay here, we, we obviously won't, uh, won't be able to progress. But there will be an, another international friendly tomorrow uh, between Na Nigeria and Mali. It's uh, in preparation for the upcoming uh, FIFA uh, World Cup qualifiers in June. Looking at what Nigeria's display, Nigeria displayed against Ghana and the 2-1 win, um, what are your thoughts going into this game against the Eagles of Mali? It's just a friendly game, really. It's just a friendly game. Nigeria played against Ghana last week and won two goals to one. It's just a friendly game. Win, lose, draw. I think we want to see how well the team can play. Now, um, against Ghana last week, a lot of us who watched the game we enjoyed the way the team played. Yes, we got to the AFCON final, but a lot of people did not enjoy how the team played. Now, people enjoy how the team played against Ghana. So it's all about how well does the team play, right? Um, how do the player, what's the transition like? How do they, you know, you know, move from defense to midfield, from midfield to attack? That's what we want to see in that game. And we saw a lot of that. We saw the return of Cyril Dessas to that team. He got a goal, even though a penalty. We saw a return of Ndidi. We saw Ndidi into the team. He captained the team against Ghana. He also played very well, too. So win, lose, or draw, it really doesn't matter. We just want to see how well can the team play because... We've drawn two of our World Cup qualifiers, home and away, to Lesotho and Zimbabwe. Not good for a country like Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Nigeria needs to win against South Africa in New York in June. So the way the team plays against Mali will either give Nigerians confidence or give us nightmares. Mm -hmm. so it's about how well the team played against Mali. I don't think the result matters for now. Let's not lose anyway. But we not draw. I don't think it matters. Uh, from what I get, you're saying you're really all about the performance and not really about the scoreline. So uh, I think that's pretty yes. clear. Yeah. But, but it's a friendly game. It's mm -hmm. a friendly game. Okay. But Finini George, um, uh, a lot of people have uh, said that his heart is firmly, firmly in the ring for the Super Eagles job. Now, if per chance he now gets another win uh, against uh, Mali in this upcoming friendly. Do you think that has put him to the fore of the of the other contenders? Would you be happy if he gets the job, uh, considering the fact that, you know, he's former international, well-trained abroad with a UFR license as well, league uh, winner with uh, Ayimba as well. But some have said that that doesn't count. That, I mean, look at the likes of Kenny Boboi. He's won the league with, uh, in Nigeria for twice, and his name is not even in the ring. But with George, uh, Finidi George, do you think he's a valid contender for that uh, post if he wins tomorrow? Listen, I'm not going to beat myself over this because um, those that run Nigeria football, those who who are taxed with the with the chance or the with the job of employing a coach, they are into the foreign coach rackets. And even if India is beating Ghana 10 nil and beats Mali 15 nil, and we have possession of 99 to one, he won't be the coach of the national team. It's not going to be, because they wouldn't let him be. Yes, what do I want? Do I think Finidi can coach national team? Yes, I think he can. He gave his credentials. Played at the top in Nigeria. Played at the top in Europe. Played at the top for the Super Eagles. Won the AFCON, was, was at two World Cups. Trained in Europe. Has won the league as a coach. You don't need any team to coach a national team. Will he get the job? He was, he's not going to get the job. Mm. Because those that will give the job do not want to give the job to him or any Nigerian. We know who wants to give the job to. We have our rackets and all of that and all of that. So I'm not going to bother myself about that. I think Finini should do his best. Listen, I, I say it. Listen, you are a coach because you coach. You're not a coach because you sit down and, and lobby for a job. Mm. He's coaching at Ayimba. He gets two good games. L look, look at Keshi. We all love Keshi, the big boss. Yeah. Well, you know, if you don't love him. Mm. But when he was sacked at Nigeria the first time, he moved to Togo. 
and qualified him for the World Cup. Then he was sacked by Togo. Mm. He got the Nigerian job. Be between Togo and Nigeria, he got the Mali job. And while he was at Nigeria, he tried to get the Cote d'Ivoire job. Coaches always coach. Okay. That's why you're a coach. Okay. Footballers always play football. That's why you're a footballer. That's why they play. So finish the job three tests. Coach mm. the national team. Coach Ayimba. If Nigeria doesn't want him, some other country will want him eventually. But I don't think he will get the job. The okay. people that will give him that job don't want him to get the job. Okay. Well, Chana Acheru, always shooting from the hip as always. Thank you so much for joining us from Port Harcourt. Uh, always an interesting time to have you on the show. Thank you so much, Chana Acheru. The pleasure is mine. Yeah. Well, that's our show tonight. Uh, it's been fun. It's been entertaining. Many thanks to everyone behind the scenes uh, who also uh, made this uh, show possible as well. And of course, our, our guest, Daily Ato, our referee, assessor, and China Achiru, who joined us as well. Many thanks to you, uh, Onya, as well. But uh, before we go... You don't want to get before we no, go? No, no, no. We have to get before we go. It's a key part of the show. Before All we right. Go. Before we go, have you ever seen the match where we have many own goals scored? The most own goals scored. It happened in 2014. A team scored eight own goals in the last 10 minutes of a regional match in Italy. Yes, I did say Italy. So it was um, a match in the Prima category where eighth tier of the league, a match between Bogota, Tenerife, and uh, Bulgaria. Mm -hmm. We had Bogota, Tenerife. They defeated their rivals at 14-3. 14-3. 14-3. The crazy part involved is that um, they had eight goals in that encounter. Counter. Eight own goals. Eight oh, own wow. goals. That's, that's the incredible. most ever scored. <laughs> it didn't happen in Africa. I'm very happy. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> Eight own goals. What a way to end the game. Many thanks again for joining us. The Game On makes a return tomorrow. My name is Onye Chobaro. My name is Bawatune Kweki. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.